going to apologize in advance because my throat is kind of messed up so my voice might crack in and out um, here and there but I really wanted to film a video because I've been reading a lot of books lately which you'll see in my wrap up but I wanted to do a couple of like small mini review type things specifically I want to talk about Carry On because I realized I never really gave it a proper review when I first read it and I just did a reread so I want to talk about that one and then I want to talk about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. We'll start off first with Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I read this for the first time in January of last year and I absolutely loved it. I cannot say enough good things about this book. People ask me what it's about when I like mention that I love it and I'm just kind of like, well, it's not as dumb as it sounds, but it's basically like, think Harry Potter, but Harry lives with Draco and Draco's a vampire. Oh, and also both of them are gay. It's, it's good, I promise. Is that spoilers? I gave this book a 5 out of 5, or like a 10 out of 5, or 10 million out of 5. I love this book. I was trying to figure out why exactly I love it so much, and I don't know. Part of me is like, I love it because of the LGBTQT plus characters. So I love that aspect of it. I'm not sure if the love story would have been as cute for me if they weren't gay. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's it. I love Baz's character in general, like he's just so funny, like his, perspe his perspective was so fun to read from, and I just loved every minute of it. Simon's was also really fun to read from, like just always, like he must be plotting, he must be plotting, so that was really fun. I mean there were some parts that I didn't like as much, like the mage always just creeped me out, like I was not a fan of the mage, so reading in his perspectives those couple of times was kind of awful. I really didn't like Agatha. I thought she was very whiny. Like, I understand where she's coming from, but like, wasn't a big fan of her. And um, Penelope, I really liked Penelope, but I felt like her point of views were kind of like, meh, whatever. Until the very last one that she has, I really enjoyed that when she's like, oh, everything makes sense now. But other than that, like, Penelope didn't really feel that important um, as a point of view. I loved her as a character, but her point of view was just fell a little flat for me. But Simon and Baz's point of views were great and I loved them. What else? I don't even know. So I loved Baz. I love the romance. I love the magic is just beautiful. Like for somebody who's so obsessed with words as I am, like as an English major and whatnot, I loved that their magic depended on words. Like that was amazing. It was just so creative and like the writing style is beautiful and I don't know. If you haven't read this one, definitely read it. I also recommend Fangirl, which is where this one was first mentioned. So sorry if I moved at all, but I just remembered some other things that I wanted to say about Carry On. I love the way that Rainbow makes it so easy to switch between these point of views without getting confused. Like, there's some scenes, or some chapters, where it'll switch between, like, Simon and Baz, like, in the middle of the chapter just for, like, a couple of lines, which it's marked, but, like, the transition is so seamless and it doesn't make it like you feel like this jarring like jump between the two perspectives and I think that's really interesting and I like how you like see both sides of the big events. I don't know. I don't know. I just love this book so much. <laughs> Simon and Baz are my background on my phone and they have been for quite a while now. There they are. I think that's all that I wanted to add maybe. It's just so cute and it makes me feel empty every time I read it because like once it's over, like, it's over and I don't know what to do. That's kind of a review of Carry On, a little bit more in depth than before. Next, I wanted to talk about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which I read. I just finished it last night. I was lucky and I went into this completely blind, like, even though I've read it so late. So I went into this not knowing anything about it except for that it's set in the future and it's about Harry's kids. At the very beginning, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I knew that it had very mixed reviews and that a lot of people, like, thought that it fell flat or was unnecessary. So I kind of went into it a little bit skeptical. The first act, I was not a huge fan of what was going on. I liked how it started and then suddenly it's like, oh, um, another year goes by, another year goes by, and I'm like, wait, why is this all happening so fast? So that was a little weird to me. At the very beginning, I didn't like how it just skipped over so much. I felt like it could have just started. Like he could have had a flashback to him meeting Scorpio and being put in Slytherin. It could have been set up a little bit differently, but once it did get into the setup part, like once it got to act two, I actually really enjoyed it. Also at that point, I started to look at it less like a 
like a story and more of a play. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an English major with a minor in theater arts and a certificate in drama and performance studies. So like I'm super into like the reading plays thing. So it was really easy for me to switch into like, okay, I'm reading a play mode instead of, oh, I'm reading the next Harry Potter book. Which brings me to my next point. I don't really like that they market this as the eighth story because I feel like that makes people think that it's like the eighth book in the Harry Potter series and that's why it falls flat, but I think that it's like its own separate thing. Like it's kind of like a spin-off. So I feel like if people think of it as more of like a spin-off and less of the eighth story, then they might enjoy it more like going into it. Once I started reading it as more of a play and less of a Harry Potter book, I started to enjoy it even more and I'm really interested to see an actual production of it. I hear that they're bringing it to New York very soon in the next couple years, Broadway relatively soon, you know. I'm really interested to go see it because I want to see how like all these stage directions play out because that was actually one of the most interesting parts for me was like reading the stage directions and like trying to picture it in my brain because it's the director in me like I really want to direct so I'm like visualizing this and I'm like yes I know how I would, how I would stage this and I want to see how like other people do. So yeah I really enjoyed the friendship between Albus and Scorpio it was so cute I loved it and of course reading this right after Carry On I'm like but when are they gonna kiss? But they didn't. So I really enjoyed that. I thought that Rose was really annoying, but I liked that she kind of added like a different dynamic to the friend group, like when she came in every once in a while. I know at first I was kind of annoyed with how all the adults were portrayed, but then I realized that like, yeah, they do have like harder lives now. And I'm sure if I read this younger, I probably would have hated all the adults and how they changed them. But understanding a little bit of like the switch from childhood to adulthood, I kind of understand why some of the adults have different attitudes towards things. So I, I really liked the the struggle of Harry in like dealing with being the chosen one, but now like his prophecy is over basically. So that was really fun. One thing, I didn't really like Ron in this play. I just thought that they just kind of took his character and like flattened it out and was like, okay, Ron's the one we're gonna make fun of and uh, everybody else is important, okay? And I felt like that wasn't really how Ron was in the books, and that wasn't a change that I could see happening just because, like, because of adulthood. Like, that change didn't make sense to me. I did not like what they did with Ron. It kind of made me upset. But I loved Hermione. I loved Harry. Ginny felt a little bit weak in this book um, as well, but I didn't notice her presence that much in the actual series, too. So her being not very strong in the play... Didn't really bother me that much, but it is something to be noted. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I thought that, I think I gave it, yeah, I gave it four stars on Goodreads. I'm very interested to see the actual show, though, because the stage directions were really nice. But yeah, you definitely have to go into it knowing that you're reading a play and not a novel, so, like, the conventions are different, which makes sense once you're reading it. If you've read it, you kind of know what I mean, I think. But yeah, those were some of the books that I recently read that I just had a lot to talk about, and I didn't want to... Put that all in my wrap up. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you also read either of these books and enjoyed them please let me know what you thought in the comments. Like this video if you like it. I forget what I'm saying. Have a great day. I will be filming again soon.